Hey all, Scott here. You may be asking, whoa, are you sick sick or just sick? I went to the doctor and they said, wow, you look sick. You should go see a doctor. I've been officially diagnosed with Well, what else is there to do other than consume more humidifier and talk about limited edition game consoles or whatever while everybody else is playing outside talking about whatever non-sick people talk about. There's a certain beauty to, yeah, just being some Zelda shit on and we gotta get rid of these things. To really spice up your relationship with a console, limited editions may just do the trick. Variants on systems and a specific color with special art, sometimes in commemoration of an event produced in limited quantities. You can pick them up at the stores or maybe just win them in a giveaway. The whole concept of these things took a while to truly catch on. Uh, most Atari 2600 owners back in the 70s didn't know what limited edition or console meant. <laughs> these things truly caught on when the 90s swung around. It was obvious then that video games were becoming a large fandom with people looking into collecting them. Limited editions either appealed to people who needed just one more Nintendo 64 and could stop whenever they wanted to, or people who needed a reason to finally pick up a system for the first time. And then the 2000s happened, and they wouldn't stop wouldn't stopping. What one man needs this many 3DS? I personally really only pick up limited edition systems when I already don't own said system. Like when Smash for 3DS came out, these slick 3DS XL systems barged in, and while I really liked how these looked, I already had a 3DS XL. Now with console upgrades, that's a different story. I didn't have a new 3DS XL, so when I saw the SNES edition on Amazon, let's just say I stimulated the hell out of the economy that day. In general, I'd say I like things pretty vanilla with how I prefer my game consoles to look. I like them to look exactly how it was always intended, how all the promotional images are. I have a black PS4 Pro and I'm proud of it, damn it. However, I must admit, it's pretty fun to get wacky sometimes with limited variants. They're always fun to gawk at, even when the term limited edition is used all the time with systems that are anything but. Ah yeah, limited edition Platinum GameCube, yeah I bathe in these things, they really weren't limited. Now I got a lot of the initial info on these limited edition consoles from ConsoleVariations.com and I highly recommend giving them a look-sees if you're into this sort of thing. Now back when limited editions started out in the early 90s, they were definitely pretty different compared to how they are today. They weren't bombastic, well-designed variants featuring iconic characters or something, they just used to be Toyota. Looking back at the majority of the Game Boy limited releases, many just had logos plastered on them, one of my favorites being the Cat Edition. Now, there were specific game-themed editions. This Wario version was given out as a prize during some game show in the UK. Weirdly enough, all it says is limited edition on the box, but when you take it out, it's literally just a black Game Boy with Wario on it. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. A good chunk of the limited Game Boys were just that, uh, prize giveaways, like the Ford one, V Drink one, this Pink Heart one. There was the Play Loud series, but that was primarily just different colored Game Boys, with some being rarer than others. Manchester, Milka, Planet Hollywood, EB Games, some silver one, the Game Boy had a ton of crazy limited models, but uh, barely any are legitimately interesting. Most just have a logo of some company on them and that's it. You see, that's one thing the Game Boy and the Atari Lynx have in common. The only limited edition of the Lynx was exactly this, but I prefer it to all the Game Boy editions because this one is the Marlboro edition. You ever ask anybody how they got hooked on cigarettes? Yeah, the Lynx. The Game Boy Pocket was an improvement compared to the original in the limited release department. We got some of the same simple logo on the front, but we also got this marble design only in Japan, a gold edition, this Japanese atomic purple one that looks exactly like the Game Boy Color. Game Boy light Oh, this is already more interesting than the original. A Pokemon Center store exclusive, which consistently happened with future Nintendo handhelds. Astro Boy, Jesus f The Nintendo 64 definitely took some cues from the handhelds and did a ton of limited editions. Uh, there was the Fantastic series that was more or less the 64's equivalent to the Play It Loud series on the Game Boy. But this time with translucent plastic. Yeah, the N64 has no shame, it had nothing to hide, and while the Fantastic series wasn't necessarily always advertised as limited edition, uh, some definitely became some of the rarest Nintendo 64 systems you can buy today. The gold version was a Toys R Us exclusive. I always thought this was a cool one. Most gold Nintendo systems feel the need to plaster the Zelda logo on them, and while that's fine, they're definitely some of my favorite limited variants. I think just pure gold can look awesome, and this N64 is no exception. Yeah, Star Wars Episode 1 Racer Limited Edition! <laughs> It's just a regular N64, isn't it? At least just needs a picture or something on the console to make the customer feel better, god. The Pokemon craze was hitting the big time during the Nintendo 64 era, so Nintendo acted upon that not by making a full Pokemon game for the N64, but just by jamming some Pokemon stickers on the system and calling it a day. Alright, let's be fair, the Pikachu editions of the N64 are crazy unique. They went above and beyond most other limited editions, which were simply just different colors with new designs on them. Ah, this one used a new funky looking mold that was longer to compensate for a giant Pikachu 
Pikachu on the top. How resourceful. His cheeks light up when the system's on. The power button's a Pokeball. The reset button's his foot. I wouldn't have it any other way. This blue one was for all the world to have, but the orange one was exclusive to Japan. Of course, if you're not into fun at all, you could have gotten the European Pokemon Stadium version instead. I can't even be bothered to yawn. Game Boy Color. Now, this was really where Nintendo realized, whoa, we like this. I can't tell you how many mornings I woke up thinking Delka Game Boy Color. It was a shoe brand in Austria, and it was one in a contest. That's fun. More Pokemon editions this time around, that's for sure. There were the Jusco editions with Mario on them. The Lunchables edition is the last thing I think of when I hear Lunchables. Gartner, the GameCube. Did somebody order multiple MTV designs? Giveaway prizes from Europe. Really the only way I can imagine playing Resident Evil 4. Yeah, these beat out the Resident Evil 4 edition. A few GameCubes went with just a simple replacement of the jewel in the middle here. Uh, Tales of Symphonia, Metroid Prime, Metal Gear Solid, Twin Snakes, Pokemon XD. However, I'd take the Pikmin 2 bundle any day. It comes with a free Pikmin. F*** any other object on store shelves. But come on, the full-blown custom variations of the GameCube are where it's at. This Hanshin Tigers edition, Gundam Char, this one for Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, which is different from other white GameCubes, but looks almost identical. That's pretty annoying. You save up to get a Crystal Chronicles GameCube only to have people assume it's a much more common white GameCube. But the one I think is the coolest to own would be the Thank You ATI Edition, a version given to the people working at ATI for their help on developing the system. Game Boy Advance. Yeah, we're only gonna be able to do some highlights here. The NES edition of the GBASP. It was awesome because they put so much love and attention into this one. Even the texture of the design was similar to the original NES controller. That's great. The Game Boy Micro had a similar NES throwback, this time for its Japanese equivalent, the Famicom. Weirdly enough, they released this in North America in addition to Japan. It's meant to look like the Famicom's Player One controller and... God, this thing is beautiful. My only problem with it is that I'm worried I'm gonna get it all scratched up if I'm not careful. Now in Japan, there was a Famicom variant of the GBASP as well, alongside a Mother 3 Game Boy Micro exclusive to the territory. Again, absolutely gorgeous. But hey, we got the Disney Channel edition over here, so it's okay. The Dual Onyx edition of the GBASP always weirded me out. Like, yeah, it looks cool, but it more so looks like a fan mod, something you get by unscrewing two differently colored GBAs and jamming them together. Nowadays, it's absolutely ridiculous to have a Nintendo handheld without a Zelda edition released at some point, and the GBA obviously had this beaut. The Rockstar Games themed one was a European exclusive, I love it, but not as much as the Tribal Tattoo variant. This is the only way to tell people not to f*** with you. There was a real 24 karat gold Old version of the SP made for a contest, but this advertisement, to my knowledge, is the only time it's ever been seen. Nobody's claimed to officially have this thing for realsies. The contest may have never ended up happening, or the people who won just never cared to show it off to the world, who knows. The Golden Sun edition from Korokoro Magazine, even more Pokemon editions, and a punch with retailer names splashed on the consoles themselves. The Game Boy Advance was a titan in the limited edition industry. Okay, I'll say this now, this is the beginning of a bit much, but it's fine, I'll always take time out of my day to talk about the 50 Cent DS, not to be overshadowed by the Hot Summer Donkey release. So many systems released to coincide with games, anniversaries, events, the Seattle Mariners, a baseball team Nintendo used to own, even more effing Pokemon, uh, who looked at the Love Plus Plus model and said, yeah, it looks like I'm finally gonna buy a DS. But things get even crazier with the 3DS, with Nintendo selling so many concurrent models, they did multiple limited variations of each, which was probably a nightmare for 3DS system collectors. The original release? No problem, not much going on here. You got this slick Zelda one that came with Ocarina of Time 3D, these versions only released via Club Nintendo, a handful of others, whatever. The 3DS XL gave light to an even slicker Zelda model. This thing was one of the limited edition consoles I always looked at with envy. It's so well themed around a link between worlds. Low rule is represented by the dark upside down Triforce on the bottom. I love this design. And like I said, the Smash Brothers one was cool too. In Japan, they actually got a new 3DS XL version of it, which I actually think looks a bit better. The Animal Crossing New Leaf model looked like a Pop-Tart, ah. Pikachu has nipples, ah. Year of Luigi, Mario and Luigi Dream Team, Pokemon, Mario, Fear Tomodachi, Rhythm, Pokemon, New Super Mario, Mario Pokemon, 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 Mario, 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 Persona, Mario Persona, Pokemon, Pokemon, Magic Mario, Castle, Mario. Mario. The NES edition is stupid. The GBASP has the outside mimic the console and the inside mimic the controller, just how it should be. The 3DS XL version just spanked a picture of the NES controller on the outer shell, and the inside, well, what do you know, it has red buttons. Lame. Now, the new 3DS featured interchangeable faceplates, meaning those were kind of the replacement for limited editions. Of course, the Game Boy Micro also had interchangeable faceplates, but that didn't stop them. There was the Ambassador Edition, sold to Club Nintendo members in Europe way before the official release date, and this thing looks so cool. But the new 3DS XL definitely had more limited versions, a few Zelda editions, one Majora's Mask and the other just with the Triforce. Not a big fan of either of these. When I think Majora, I think purple. What the hell is this? Metroid, Monster Hunter, oh man, what else? How about Pokemon? Not as many editions as the original 3DS XL, but some cool designs here, that's for sure. I do like the 
3DS and NES edition mainly because it didn't have the glossy coating on the outside like most other new 3DS XLs have. How about the 2DS? There were these cool Pokemon ones, shocker. They were translucent and made to commemorate Pokemon's 20th anniversary, even coming in boxes reminiscent of the old school Pokemon Game Boy games. This Zelda one looks tart to me, and hey, what do you know? I have the Super Mario Maker edition. This is hideous. The new 2DS XL limited editions did a lot of extra stuff on the outer shell. Minecraft, a Hylian Shield, Dragon Quest, a Pokeball, Pikachu, all these had special 3D designs that weren't just simple splashes of artwork and that was really cool. Now with the Nintendo home consoles, there really aren't nearly as many editions as their handhelds. The Wii had a one-of-a-kind gold-plated version given as a gift to Buckingham Palace. I've been scouring the Ohio Craigslist for this thing, I will find it one day. There was a red Wii released for Mario's 25th anniversary and who could forget the Glee Wii? The Wii U didn't have much. Literally, the only Wii U released outside of the standard black and white consoles was the Wind Waker edition. It pairs nicely with the original Zelda 3DS, but the gamepad was the only special part about this package. The Wii U console itself wasn't any different. One cool thing about the various Wii U bundles, though, is that they all have unique artwork on the boxes, giving a cool spin on the U logo. They're all super neat. I'd love to see a full collection of these boxes someday. Since the Nintendo Switch is a handheld and a console, you can bet Nintendo has been more willing to spit out new limited editions. Diablo, Monster Hunter Double Cross, Pokemon Smash Brothers, but easily the coolest one is the Nintendo Labo Edition. All the other ones kind of generally follow the same idea, just a white tracing of an image on the back of the Switch or the dock. The Labo release gives gives everything the essence of cardboard, it's great. Sadly, it is pretty limited though, these were for winners of a Labo-themed contest. Well, those are all the limited edition consoles, damn it. The Sega had a few, primarily with the Game Gear and Dreamcast. The Game Gear's limited editions weren't crazy, a few different colors, Coca-Cola, you know, typical stuff. But the Dreamcast had the Sega Sports Black version, how did this thing fail? Look at this Hello Kitty one, we have X-Ray Vision! This Platinum model is sleek, there was this Bang & Sonic Anniversary one, the Maziora edition, I like just for the box alone, look at this guy. And you couldn't have special edition Dreamcast without a Seaman release. Even a special Christmas variant came out too. If only it had a Coca-Cola version. Oh, f***. PlayStation time. We got a console in commemoration of 10 million PS1s sold, consoles in commemoration of 20 million PS2s, consoles in commemoration of Monsters, Inc. Scare Island. Sony really liked to do the whole commemoration of a certain number of units sold thing. And they did this a lot more, even recently with the PS4. But oh, man, this gold edition is great. There's a few standouts, but overall the PlayStation brand didn't get super wild with limited editions. Most were just different colors or simply released alongside a game. The PS4 has been having a lot though. Who else better to give away a gold PS4 than Taco Bell? Batman, Dragon Quest, Call of Duty, Spider-Man, Kingdom Hearts, God of War, this amazing throwback to the PS1. So many additions. But just like Nintendo, Sony went berserk with their handhelds, especially the PSP. Tons coincided with games, but only one was a Hannah Montana edition. I love the God of War Ghosts of Sparta one. Black and red is one of my favorite color combinations. There was another God of War release, but I like the other one a bit more. This one's great too, though. The PS Vita honestly couldn't compete. Most designs are kind of boring here. It's all about the color with this handheld and not much else. I kind of like the Persona 4 Dancing All Night edition, but other than that, nothing really sticks out. Xbox, you ever considered just taking it easy? The original Xbox has some of the most iconic limited releases. The Mount Dew version is one I always think of. Getting it seemed like a bit of a hassle though. You had to drink a lot of Mountain Dew just to have a shot at winning it. It wasn't guaranteed. And hey, if you don't like Mountain Dew, there's always the Hulk. An Xbox for the launch team at Microsoft, the Panzer Dragoon, Orta 1, my god. Halo Special Edition is a super well-known one, and the Atari Xbox makes me want to crack out a thesaurus to see all the synonyms for the word wrong. The Xbox 360 had the Simpsons Movie Edition that was crazy limited. Taco Bell back again with another release. The Star Wars Edition looked fantastic, and I'm not even a big Star Wars guy. There were so many 360s released, many came out alongside big games. Uh, the Xbox One kinda continued the trend, but not nearly as much. While there are a ton of pretty good looking ones, uh, Microsoft has mainly been focusing on controller variants this generation. But hey, I'm not complaining too much, Microsoft can make a mean looking controller. Great talk guys, limited edition systems are fun to gawk at, but you know what else is fun to gawk at? This official statement from my doctor! Let's see what this illness is officially doing to me. Oh no. If I don't do anything about this mild congestion, I'm gonna die in 60 to 70 years!